Many people all over the world go missing and often sadly disappear without a trace. The real mystery is in cases of people who vanish and then reappear, sometimes years later, with no explanation of why they left or where they have been. Here are five bizarre cases of people who seem to vanish into thin air, only to reappear just as strangely. Number five, Dr. William Horatio Bates. Dr. Bates disappeared from New York City in August 1902 after leaving a short note for his wife saying he was called out of town to some major operations, of which he would write details later, and that he was glad to get so much money for us all. His hurried departure and delighted the prospect of a lot of money were all the more curious given that he was already a wealthy man. He neither returned nor wrote as promised and after a few days his wife enlisted his fellow Masonic Lodge friends to try to find him. A virtually global search brought Mrs Bates the information that her husband was in a London hospital and suffering from malnutrition despite access to funds in London. On Mrs. Bates arriving in London, Bates denied knowing her, but agreed to stay with her at a hotel to stimulate his memory. He slowly began to recall receiving a request to set sail from New York some weeks earlier and performing surgery for a brain abscess on a patient. However, within just two days, he left the hotel and again disappeared. His wife continued searching for him until her passing in 1907. Three years later, a fellow doctor and friend of Bates came across him in Grand Forks, North Dakota. Bates was working in his friend's ophthalmology practice. The doctor eventually took Bates back to New York and the two went into partnership. However, strangely, Bates never recovered memories of his past life prior to that unknown call in 1902, nor what had happened to him. Number four, Philip Cesarigo. Cesarigo appeared to have begun to live the life of a fantasist after two rejections of his applications to join the ranks of the elite Special Air Services, SAS, Special Forces Unit. His daughter described how he would dress like a typical SAS man and purposely drink in places known to be frequented by members of the unit. Then in Croatia in 1991, he seemed to disappear, with some accounts implying that he may have been killed by a car bomb. However, in 2000, an intriguing new book appeared on the New York Times bestseller list entitled Jihad, The Secret War in Afghanistan. It was penned by a hitherto unknown author called Tom Carew, who had made previous statements about having served with the SAS for over 20 years. He had described training Mujahideen fighters against the Soviets in the 70s and 80s. Carew went on to become a regular media commentator following the 9-11 attacks. However, the more public appearances he made, the more its claims began to crumble, culminating in other SAS soldiers essentially accusing Carew of being a fraud. The BBC's Newsnight program arranged a confrontation which uncovered that Carew was actually Philip Cesarigo, the same man who had striven to join the SAS years before that. After faking his own demise once, Cesarigo again disappeared, then using the name Philip Stevenson in Belgium. In 2009, his remains were found in a rented garage where he'd been living, apparently accidentally exposed to carbon monoxide. Number three, Stephen Kubacki. Kubacki's story is mystifying and suggests supernatural involvement. On a February morning in 1978, near Lake Michigan, student Stephen Kubacki had ventured out to enjoy several hours of skiing. However, when he did not return the following day, a wide-ranging search was launched. An ominous sign were footprints discovered in the direction where Kubacki planned to head. Disturbingly, they stopped abruptly at the frozen water's edge. 
There were no marks or disturbments on the icy surface of the water and no indication of the ice being broken anywhere. Gubaki's skis and backpack were later discovered, but with no other signs of his whereabouts, the search teams gave up and his family prepared for tragic news. It was well over a year later in early May 1979 that Stephen Gubaki suddenly appeared at his parents' doorstep with no memory of where he had been. He had simply awoken earlier that day in a field in Pittsfield, hundreds of miles from where he had vanished and about 40 miles from his house. Bizarrely, he was wearing clothes that weren't his and carried an odd bag of maps which he knew nothing about. Despite media offers of riches for his story, Gubaki retreated from the public eye, having no memory of the incident, but declining hypnotic regression. He denied experiencing any traumatic aftermath and wished to keep it that way. Number 2. Linda Atiaga On September the 22nd, 2012, in the Arkansas Ozarks, brother and sister Eddie Huff and Linda Atiaga embarked on a day's hiking in Woodland. Later, Eddie returned alone, explaining he had left his sister at a relative's house. However, the circumstances were strange. Eddie seemed strange and disorientated and appeared to have no memory of the last few hours, and it was discovered that 53-year-old Artiaga was not at the relative's house, as he had claimed. A search party set out, and Artiaga was finally located in a strangely random spot, deep within the forest. She seemed in shock and agitated by whatever events had occurred to lead her to that place. Artiaga later claimed that her brother had been injured and that she had decided to venture out and find help. Her somewhat vague explanation was that, as she made her way through the woods, she encountered other hikers who did not respond to her and, no matter how hard she tried, simply didn't seem to be able to hear her voice when she called out to them. Even more frighteningly, she kept seeing bizarre shadowy figures that appeared to be observing her from behind trees and bushes. The next thing she knew, she felt herself regaining consciousness in the forest, hearing the search party calling her name. These disturbing experiences still remain unexplained. Number 1. Amber Rose Smith how does her two-year-old stay safely disappeared for 24 hours? Amber Rose Smith was playing happily at home in Uwego County, Michigan on October the 8th, 2013. Amber was sitting in the lounge with her father when he briefly left the room, and upon his return, she was nowhere to be found. A massive search involving hundreds of volunteers was immediately activated, covering the entire surrounding area. It wasn't until the next day that Amber Rose was found a few miles from her home. Strangely, she was discovered in a location that had been extensively searched the previous day. How the little girl had managed to traverse such a huge distance and evade the search teams who sprang to action so soon after her disappearance remained a complete mystery.